Hey, this is Camping Conversations, a regular podcast here at Woodlands Church. I'm Dave Bonnison here with Whitney Swenson. Hey, Whitney. Hey, Dave. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. It's when we record. Um, we, happy Wednesday uh, for the, the hearers. If you're listening, yes. Um, if they're listening on Wednesday, who knows when they're listening. Our guest this week yeah. is none other than Doug Schneider. Hey, Doug. Doug. Hi. It's good, good to be here again. Good to see you. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and I was just reflecting as we were starting. I mean, it, it's how I started the prayer when we pray for this is that uh, we've worked together for an awful long time. Now. It's been a while. Mm-hmm. Three I was us, reading so. something recently. Yeah. And I saw your name and I thought, wow, Whitney's been here that long. <laughs> I don't remember what, but it was just yeah. recently. And yeah. I do have something for you to remind me later that I came across to you, you might be interested in. Okay. It'll be 10 years for me in May. Wow. And you were 10 years in October. I was 10 years in October. Yeah. Before I came out. Wow. Yep. And you, wow. you're at 14, 15? 15. 15. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, so definitely the, the old guy on, on staff. <laughs> well, I so. appreciate the way you put that. I <laughs> yeah. mean, it could be that I'm younger than you both, but just so. have been here longer. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's clearly not. <laughs> True. The, 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 let's say the wise guy on staff. Mm-hmm. There, so, there we go. <laughs> there we go. So, uh, Doug, one of the things that we've been asking our guests, um, we've I talked just about your. I want to know before you oh, go there. You jumped on the cabin conversations mug he's train. In, he's on the mug I train did, right away. I thought so, that's pretty cool. I'll, I'll it is comply. Cool. How hot is the liquid that you put in there? I just put it in there, so it's pretty good. Okay. It, it's great to, to hold your fast. hand. Like it's, it right. it's definitely a tin, yep. tin yep. camp mug. Yep. Yeah. So, but yeah. keep your hands warm, which yeah, is nice because sure. it's a little chilly in this it's room. It's a little chilly. Yeah. That's why I brought warm water too. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you okay, brought warm water, but you've got I a tea bag in there. I put a tea bag in it. So it still has lemon and honey, so it's still hot lemonade. But I put a tea bag, so now it counts as tea. It, well, what's in the tea? Like it's like a lemon ginger tea. <laughs> yeah. So it's now it's tea with some lemon and honey. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So that's uh-huh. great. No, no. That's great. It's You're growing, thing. Whitney. I'm growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Whitney, d- drink what you know you want. Don't do. allow what my snack. What does she usually <laughs> bring in? A juicy well, cup or a, uh, Yes. <laughs> Basically, it's hot lemonade. It's just lemon, a lemon slice and honey. And okay. there's been debate on whether that is called tea or not. Because there's nothing steeping. It's a technicality. It's not a technicality. It, it's it's a definition. Herbal. So is lemon an herb? It's fruit. So it's not herbal. It's so fruity. it can't be a tea. It could be a f- See, that's the whole debate. And so that's why I stuck a tea bag in there, there you today. Go. There you go. <laughs> this is good. This is good. We're making progress. <laughs> and people I, I also conforming would to say, my definitions. I would not put the tea bag in there if it wasn't good. It is very good. Like that's a awesome. lemon yep. ginger. You're not settling. I'm not settling. I'm so. just elevating. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, we've been uh we've been asking guests as they they come back on uh during the season about uh your reading habits. Hmm. Um, when when do you read? Hmm. Like, what time during your day do you read or consume content? If that's a listening thing, yeah, too. Yeah, consume content would be more accurate. Um, more and more, it's audible. I read in the evenings, some, not every evening. I do a lot of audible uh, stuff now. So, and and during the winter, I find myself in a little bit of a dirge because. Mm-hmm. In the summer, I do a lot of my audible listening mm. while I'm doing lawn work. Okay, mm-hmm. sure. So if I'm out in the yard raking leaves, cutting grass, even cutting wood, yeah. uh, I will put on hearing protection with my earbuds inside them, and I'll mm-hmm. listen to books. Yeah. And um, and then if I have commute times, I'll do a lot of us listening to a book. The other day, I was going down to Wisconsin Dells to see our daughter and, and listening to a book on the way down there. Mm-hmm. So I like to do a lot of listening while I'm traveling, mm-hmm. and uh, that's most of my reading time. I do... When I read, uh, like the Kindle Paperwhite, so yeah. uh, I just fired that up again, and I'm reading through a book on Romans. Which one? By Douglas Moo. Oh boy! It's a commentary that uh-huh. I heard of this weekend, or last weekend when I was in Minneapolis. And uh-huh. I'm going to get that right away. Uh-huh. Have the privilege of having met Douglas Moo. His son was one of our students in university. Really cool. And uh, and it was a great plug for the book. And I'm not. I'm going to. Start reading that. Okay. What's what's the commentary name? Uh, great question. Uh, Probably Romans. Romans. It's Romans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the got epistle a subtitle. to the Romans. Yep. It's a, it's a, so. it's got a subtitle. You're gonna look it up right now. I could look it up. Oh, is this? Uh, I like the title of it, but Doug, I think I have a paper copy of that. Is this the it's, Nick Nick T the New International Commentary in the New uh, Testament? Yes. Uh, that I yeah. don't know. So. That's, that's a what's that's like. a killer commentary. It's series. encountering the Book of Romans. Okay, Go back to the not the Lucky one. Just kidding. Well, <laughs> they all got excited <laughs> until they. <laughs> well, that, that's that's a that's a pretty encountering w- the Book of Romans. What's oh, the subtitle? Come on, Kindle, stay at the title page. It won't do that for me. 
It's one of my little pet peeves <laughs> with there's a way to cheat. <laughs> Well, I, I'm uh, listing that down um, in our book list if, if people want It's just want encountering to. the Book so, of Romans. What's yeah. Yep, by, Dougie. So, yep. by Dougie Moo. Yep. So who's a great kind of a foremost uh, New Testament scholar um, of our generation. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's yeah. really, really does good work that yeah. highly values yeah. God's word. Um, yeah, just really accessible. So that's great. And, and I appreciate the, the cl- like summer... Yard work and stuff is is one of the times that I will dip my toes into podcasteriness. Mm-hmm. Um, on occasion, I also just tend to mow the lawn quietly, like yeah, well, not quietly, loudly. Too. But yeah, um, until I get that electric mower. <laughs> I had an electric mower. Bad, they're not battery operated. They're not that much uh, quieter. quieter. They're they're definitely quieter. They, they complain a lot. So they're always so. whining. <laughs> so they've got some noise to them. So yeah, yeah. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, but but again, I just don't know where I find that time. So we just our yard is still like not a great yard, so it, we don't mow our lawn that often. It's like once a month. Yeah, we just turn <laughs> it into to lawn grass, sure. and then it goes real short for a little while. Yeah. So I'd shoot, I cut can't, it and I feed the animals. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. When it gets that long, it's just hey. Um, let's transition to talking about the sermon. Let's do it. So we, Sunday's sermon. You gave the so sermon. We we did Jude. Uh, one Hit Wonders, yeah. uh, wrapped up that series. We'll be back in Acts next week. So mm-hmm. that'd be nice to return to that kind mm-hmm. of storyline. And as we look at the, the Church on the Move, which is the, mm. the title of that series, as we look at the next uh, chunk. That one's going to so. go th- through up to Easter, mm-hmm. right? There's a break for Easter. I believe so. Palm Sunday, Easter. Yeah, and then we jump back into Acts, I think. Does it change titles? I'm not sure. Okay. I don't remember off the top of my so head. So we started so. in Acts. We yeah. jumped over to the One Hit Wonders. Yeah. And, and, and Christmas. We had the Christmas series, correct. too. That's yeah. right. And we're coming back to Acts then, mm-hmm. the Church on the Move. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great. The intention overall, the intention is that we will finish Acts, that mm-hmm. we will go through Acts. But it'll probably take about four quarters, about okay. an entire year gotcha. uh, yeah. to get through that. So yeah. this summer, we'll be jumping around into some different books and mm-hmm. spending some different time in different places. Um, and then return to Acts in the fall, theoretically. There's some shorter remember. series in there, but mm-hmm. I think that that's the the current current layout Good. of the sermon series plans. So it's been fun. Even as John and I have talked about it, it's just like, why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we continue in that? Yeah, such, um, such a good book. Yeah. And just focusing on the Spirit's empowerment of mm-hmm. the healthy church and how the church responds to challenges and struggles. And mm-hmm. that's, that's certainly what the next quarter of the book looks at is mm-hmm. this rising persecution and mm-hmm. first martyrdom and Paul mm-hmm. uh, and all of that stuff. And it's so, so refreshing because you read this and you're like, oh. They had those challenges too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They had those questions too. Mm-hmm. How, how do they process through it? Mm-hmm. Yep. And they handled it and the spirit mm-hmm. was faithful and he is faithful. And mm-hmm. um, it's, it's really an encouraging reminder to us in, in, in the modern church. Mm-hmm. So you, you had a question pre-podcast on Jude. Right. Oh, well, okay. So um, I was sitting down with a couple of ladies and we're, we're doing a little bit of what um, group life is asking groups to go through Bible 101 content with their groups members. So it's instead of a class, it's just a facilitation of what Dave, you and your team have put together Yeah. as far as content and then teaching how to study scripture. So um, Christina Moody is one of the collaborators and creators of that with you. Mm -hmm. And she's has been teaching and it's just like, hi, this sitting around the table with scripture in front of you and people making observations is so incredible, yeah. so incredibly deep and rich. And there's people making observations I'm not making and it just enriches what mm-hmm. what the text, um, what we can do with it. Mm-hmm. So um, how we can study it, I should say. So it's Christina and Gabby and myself currently. And we're talking about this and kept saying teachers, teachers, teachers. And even you kind of mentioned teachers. That these, there's teachers slipping into the church. And then I that back and I'm like wait wait a second where does it say teachers um in Jude and we couldn't find it and not that it's not yeah. there but I but but then we thought thought about the context that this is written to this is written to a house church and the proximity of the people in their lives is so vastly different than what we think of as church right now yeah. um and so teachers are not they were influencers, right? And they're influencing with the proximity of their lives and and how um, they're leading their lives. And you got you kind of you you went there towards the end of your sermon of this is it, it wasn't necessarily maybe doctrinal teaching, but 
lifestyle teaching mm-hmm. that Jude is talking about here. And and that makes even more sense in, in the context of what house churches looked like in the first century. Um, it was people gathering within like a house. It was more like a little tiny business village kind of thing. Yeah, right? four or five families at most. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what you're going to end up with. Yeah. But they lived side, shoulder to shoulder. Like, And there wasn't as much. We drive into our garages hit the button to open the garage door, drive our car in, hit the button to close the garage door and get in our house sometimes. Yeah. There's just not a lot of transparency in the way that these people would have lived. There's a lot more shoulder to shoulder living. Life on life. Life on life. Yeah. Living out of what it looks like to live together. So it just was that influence piece. Um, and and just the stark reminder of uh, how how important it is to, to know who you're listening to and who you're watching mm-hmm. and, and how mm-hmm. easy it is for us to hide in our yeah. modern day, um, hide certain things, hide certain mm. sin, hide certain whatever we're, we're stewing on um, because we can go into our own little corners of life and it, close the garage It's so much people. individualism. It yeah. really yeah. is. And mm-hmm. what you just said is so important. We think we're not being influenced right. to our own district peril or whatever mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we assume that in our own minds we're not letting it but we're constantly mm-hmm. listening to mm-hmm. viewing hearing interacting with people and and god loves every one of them the same but most of the people we interact with on a day-to-day basis outside of sunday mornings outside of our families they're not evil people but mm-hmm. they don't know christ mm-hmm. they don't know the goodness of god mm-hmm. and and we are constantly being influenced i think to woodstock it's just <laughs> we want to be nonconformists. Hmm. Woodstock proved there's no such thing as a nonconformist. Hmm. There was thousands upon thousands of, upon thousands of quote unquote nonconformists that all dressed, act, and looked the same. <laughs> yeah. Conf- was, you're conforming you, to a different standard. We're, we're conforming yeah. to a different standard. And, yeah. and what is the standard hmm. we're going to conform to? Hmm. Thanks for taking us back to Woodstock. You're welcome. <laughs> you are the wise yes. one on staff. So, <laughs> but that's a great uh, question. Like yeah. it, it is. It's that Joshua charge: choose for you today who you will follow, yeah. um, and don't pretend like you're not going to be following someone or influenced mm-hmm. by someone, or you're mm-hmm. not going to be listening to voices. We are people who listen. That that's how we mm-hmm. that's how we react and even, respond. Even right? Bob Dylan got it right in his old song: "You got to serve somebody." Yeah, yeah. It might be the devil or it might be the Lord, but you got to serve someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that that's so, the word influencers is so good. And I used it second uh, service okay. way more than I did first service. Mm-hmm. I, I used mm-hmm. teachers a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if I had had that insight in the prep, I would have leaned into that a lot because mm-hmm. it's such a cultural word mm-hmm. as well when mm-hmm. you talk about social media and mm-hmm. influencers mm-hmm. and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, people who are making their career based off of influencing cultural trends or what ideology to buy on or Amazon thoughts. And how to organize your house? Yeah, <laughs> or, or, or how to decorate? Right. Um, those sorts of things. It's it's so it's so prevalent, and yet that that's what was was present here. I, I think I would lean towards assuming that these people these people showed up and ingratiated themselves into a community with a message that mm-hmm. they wanted to promulgate. Mm-hmm. I like the word promulgate just because it's a nice word. <laughs> they wanted to promote uh, this message. So they're influencing, but I think in, in that culture that was likely a teacher component too. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's necessarily wrong to say teachers, um, but they were, that's definitely what they were doing was mm-hmm. influencing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's true that Jude does not use the word teachers at all. Um, certain people, he says a certain lot. People. Certain yeah. people. These people. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. So, uh, but man, he is blistering in, Ooh. in terms of his, uh, uh, assignment for certain people have crept in unnoticed verse four who mm-hmm. long ago were destined for this condemnation, mm-hmm. ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. Those are the two categories right there. Mm-hmm. Pervert the grace of our God into sensuality, which is likely what Paul was also pushing against in Romans 6. I mm-hmm. think when, when mm-hmm. we think about, you know, grace does mm-hmm. not give us license to sin. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, mm-hmm. So. Should we, because grace covers us sin all the more. Yeah. But by no, no means. By no means. <laughs> right. so, I had a professor um, in college who jumped off his table when he said that to. And, there you go. You're not going to forget that. Yeah, to sear that into our minds. And I've never forgotten. He wanted yeah. to make that by no means. He stood up on his desk. Absolutely. Said, Paul no. wasn't just suggesting here. He was yeah. making it clear that, that that is completely foolish. Yeah, verse six uh, is is compelling to me. It, it 
And the angels, well, I got to back up a little bit. He says, now I want to remind you, although you once were, fu- although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, and I love this because it's an Old Testament right. reference of Jesus. It's one of the most direct Old Testament references that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, who? Jesus. One with God, mm-hmm. with God in the beginning. Afterward, destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not stay within their own position of authority. Mm. What does that mean? They didn't remain where they were supposed to remain. Right. And and, and, and how does that apply to us? I mean, we, we can always be, we can always have an opinion, but even people within our, our circles of influence, we, we, we go outside of our position of authority when we start making universal claims that don't come from God. Mm. Now, if I say, this is that, and it's universal. You have a right to critique, destroy, uh, rebuff my opinions because it's just a fallen human being's opinion. Hmm. But if I'm speaking what God has clearly made known because of who he is, then I'm speaking on God's authority, and I have to be humble and cautious about that. But when we start getting adamant, we have to ask the question that the Pharisees asked Jesus, on whose authority are you saying mm-hmm. that? Yeah. And if I say on my authority, you ought to walk away from whatever I'm saying. If I say on God's authority, because here, and I show you in a text, mm-hmm. we can all have opinions and ideas. What does a text say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When we're looking at the scriptures. Mm-hmm. What, what does it go back to? What, what, yeah. is God, what has yeah. God said? And when we're formulating ideologies, when we're formulating uh, principles and lifestyles, what does God have to say about mm-hmm. that? Yeah. And it, it is such a cultural not a cultural, it's, it's not a new thing in any way, shape, or form, but to try to submit scripture to our own mm-hmm. uh, cultural bias or our own understanding of what things are right and true. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's so fascinating because a lot of times those, um, those tendencies come out of what I would argue is God's image in us, an image mm-hmm. for fairness or goodness mm-hmm. or love, equality. Those sorts of things that are mm-hmm. um, divine, mm-hmm. but not when they're applied outside of God's good order and structure that He's created and shaped the world with. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and so so it's so interesting to wade into those conversations because the the argument against it is well, you're not being loving and saying X, mm-hmm. Y, or Z. Mm-hmm. Um, definition of marriage is clearly one of mm-hmm. one of those huge mm-hmm. areas mm-hmm. Um, where there's a lot of people who just we just need to submit our our understanding of, of goodness to scripture. Yeah. And what love means. Yeah. I, I like to sum up love and you, I have an ongoing debate with a friend uh, <laughs> on this and we, we agree with one another in general. But if I were to give a definition for love, it's it's found in John, John chapter 114. It's John's description of Jesus. He came full of grace and truth, truth and grace, never separated the two. So speaking truth, but how do we do that? We do that graciously. But we are not, there's no place for grace if truth doesn't exist. There's yeah. no place for love, unconditional love, if there's no sin. If all is permissible, then there's no reason for me to to unconditionally love you. I love you because you're towing, towing the line with everything that's acceptable. And if we lower the bar of what's acceptable, then I have no excuse to not love you. Hmm. But if I call what you're doing sin and you call what I'm doing sin, but you treat me with dignity and grace, that's unconditional love. You love me despite the fact that I'm violating God's standard. And I need God's grace because I'm violating God's standard. There's no need for grace if there's no standard that we violate. Yeah, and it's tolerance too. It, that, that's, that's, a, the, that's the other word. Yes. Mm-hmm. So the yep. culture is so grabbed onto tolerance means acceptance. And that clearly Accepting not even the definition of the word. Right. Well, year, years ago, working with a student group <clears throat> at Knox College in Illinois, Inner Varsity Christian Fellowship, I was on staff with them. And we were getting a lot of flack for some of the biblical stances and just being who we were. Uh, we had a great reputation amongst most. We had professors even that came to Christ, and we tried to emulate the love of Christ in the midst of a hostile environment. But there were certain people who no, nonetheless did not like us. And so mm-hmm. one day, uh, or several days, they had begun tearing down our bulletin board over and over and over again. And I asked our student leader uh, team, I said, what do, what do you— Look up the word tolerance, because that was the beginning of the massive buzzword at that time in the early 90s. Look up the word tolerance. They looked up the word tolerance. I said, what do you think of that definition? Yeah, it doesn't mean we accept everything. So what if we throw that up on the bulletin board? So they did. They cut out paper, and they put on the bulletin board tolerance. And one of our leaders wasn't at that discussion, and he came into a leader meeting a week later, and he was so mad. 
He said, did you see what they put on our bulletin board? Did you, who, they had the audacity to try to tell us what tolerance is when they've been tearing down our board and, and be degrading us and berating us just for who we are. And I said, Andre, Andre, son, calm down. So we put that up there. <laughs> oh, us. we did? Good. They need to know what tolerance really is. You know, we live in a world that doesn't understand what tolerance yeah. is. Yeah. And, and understanding that we can differ in opinions and disagree with one another. It's a great book if you really love to read. It's an old book, 30 years old. That's very... Uh, old telling. book, thirty years old. Yes. So old, thirty years. Yes, well, ancient compared to to, to, to many that people tend to read. Today. <laughs> Sorry, <Doc>. um, <clears throat> by Don Carson called the Gagging of God. Yeah, mm. right. And uh, he really gets into the realities of uh, this in acceptance of tolerance and what it looks like. And mm. anyway, I digress a little bit, but that's no, but, what's going on in the culture here? I think too. And I think um, one of the things that I, I'm just reminded of uh, again, again, when it comes to the authority of Christ is we have to make a choice whether or not we will submit ourselves to that authority. Mm. And then, yeah. and then we have to wrestle with the follow-up question. Well, then what does that authority tell me? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But too often we, we, we make that reverse. Like mm-hmm. yeah. what does the authority tell me? And if I agree with it, then I'll submit myself to it. And that's right. not the submission to authority in any way, yeah. shape or form. Right. Um, and this is just a constant, I think it's a constant play and a constant reframing, refocusing of our mind um, that really can only be diagnosed. I mean, it can be diagnosed, I would mentioned in the sermon, Psalm 139, 23, and 24, mm-hmm. search me and seek me, O Lord. Mm-hmm. This, it's one of these verses that I love. I just can never quite quote it correctly. <laughs> I just never got the right words always for it. But yeah, the, just the notion of just, just asking mm-hmm. God, know my heart. Show yeah. me if there's any deceitful way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Like, mm-hmm. um, diagnose me, Lord. Uh, that is a great practice to have. But the other thing was like, ask one another. Yeah. Ask like, hey, is there any way, any place in my life that you see me maybe struggling to submit to the authority of Christ? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a yeah. good question to ask one another. Yeah, because we see in others sometimes what we ought to see in ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But we can tend to see it in others to invite others to say, speak into our lives is really powerful. That Speaking way. of that, Doug, I think uh, that yeah, I, I need to say, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, and that natural. But you natural. know, somebody just asked me, um, well, not just, it was quite a while ago, but they stopped me in the foyer and, and uh, in church and there was, uh, I can't remember if it was Brian or somebody else, but pe- preaching on Psalm 139. And so it was a while back, obviously, but um, they said, wait a minute. He said in Psalm 139, David is condemning the wicked. Lord, destroy the wicked. Right. And aren't we supposed to love going back to that? What does it mean to love? What's the definition of love? Mm. And, and I thought, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of a poetic way of David agreeing with God about how evil evil is mm-hmm. and that we want it destroyed, but it's not directed specifically at the people in terms of their that they're not loved by God, but that God does hate evil and we ought to agree with God and hate evil. But the interesting thing that occurred to me is I've read that many times, even as I was talking with them in the foyer, what's the next phrase say? Search my heart, O God. See if there be, in some translations, say, see if there be any wicked way in me. Yeah. And leave me. So David's saying, Lord, destroy the wicked. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just asked the God of the universe who's capable of destroying the wicked to destroy the wicked. But that could be me. Where does the line run? If there's any wicked way in me, <laughs> right. I don't want right. to be destroyed. So right. search my heart, know my mind, and, right. and, and, and and see if there's any wicked way in me and lead me to the way everlasting. I don't want to stay in the valley of the people of the wicked. Mm-hmm. I don't want to dwell with the wicked, mm-hmm. as Psalm 1 says. Right. right. Go back to Psalm 1, and it doesn't, like, again, this, so Psalm 139 asks God to destroy the wicked, not us. Right. It's God's judgment. Mm-hmm. And Psalm 130, or Psalm 1 is, don't stand, don't sit, don't walk. In the seat of mockers amongst right, the wicked. Yeah. Right, But what do we do? We meditate on the law of the Lord, Lord. right? Yeah. And then yeah. we're fruitful. And then we're, we have, our roots run deep and can, can pull up what needs to be pulled up. And so what happens if we disagree with God? Yeah. Who, who's wrong? We are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just kind of to keep reminding yeah. myself, it's good to ask questions. Yeah. And the rest right. of the text. And I don't agree. I don't. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I'm the one that's wrong. Help me to understand this in a mm-hmm. proper context. I've done that a lot reading in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. It's like, I don't understand this. I want to mm-hmm. play uh, the guy on Lucille Ball. What's his name? And Lucy, you got some explaining to do. I, I find myself going, God, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> now I'm dating myself. <laughs> yeah. This, right? This, <laughs> right? There you go. Well, Woodstock did yes. as well. So <laughs> yes. Like, <laughs> okay. I wasn't among them, but I could have been uh, if I was born earlier. Um, but anyway, 
you know, we get frustrated with God. I don't get this. So whose authority are we going to go with? Is it Jesus' authority or is it God's authority? And if we don't understand, that's okay to not understand. But let's ask the questions right. and say, God, search my heart. Help me, help me grasp what this is all about. But you leave space for doubters, right? I so love that. Space. I, I yeah. love that, love that, love that. I had just highlighted that. And I love that you highlighted it um, when you spoke yesterday. Yeah. That uh, give mercy to those who doubt. Because mm-hmm. um, we do. Mm-hmm. We do. And uh, one of the assumptions I think that non-Christians make is that we're naive, narrow-minded, little goody-goodies who don't understand the world around us. Therefore, we have this faith and we cling to it. Yeah, The assumption is right. that we've never had the same questions they have, that mm-hmm. we've never wrestled through them, that we've never, mm-hmm. never dug deep. And sometimes it's the other way around. They've never dug deep and wrestled with these questions. And we as a church can be the ones that cause them not to because we say, oh, just believe. So we wrestle with them and we have to let others wrestle with them and have mercy on people's doubts and walk through it with them. I think that's so good. Even when it comes to asking questions from the text, we need to be very transparent. And it's it's in that transparency of like, God, I don't understand, or that doesn't feel right, or like, I don't see how this works. Mm -hmm. It's in really leaning into those questions that we can make the choice to choose to trust or we can understand more of God's mind as we come to understand the text in a deeper, Mm -hmm. richer, fuller way. Mm -hmm. But it's when we try to skip over those questions, I I don't understand, so I'm just going to keep going, that we rob ourselves of the opportunity to either trust or grow in our understanding. Mm -hmm. And and I think I would Mm -hmm. agree with you, Doug, when you say that the vast majority of the unbelieving world has just simply skipped over those questions. Mm -hmm. Um, They've been like, this is hard. I'm not going to wrestle with this. I'm going to skip over, assuming that their own authority is sufficient to answer any of these problems. Mm -hmm. Um, I I consistently go back, you know, the problem of evil in the world, uh, if you wrestle with that, which everybody wrestles with, Mm -hmm. everyone has to wrestle with. But when you skip over the problem of evil and dismiss God, what do you get? You only get hopelessness. Yeah, you have the, it. Doesn't make the evil go away. It doesn't make the evil. It, it doesn't just make means you've got to deal with the evil with no explanation, yeah, nor anybody to walk through it with. It's completely unsatisfactory. But skipping over it seems simpler. It seems skim- simpler than than saying, "Okay, there is a good sovereign God in this world who, for some reason unknowable to an extent, allows the brokenness and hurt and pain that we have to walk through. There, some way it works. Mm-hmm. I don't get how it works." Um, but to skip over that question just leaves the brokenness and pain there hmm. without any hope. Right, right. Certainly, I right. mean, going back to, you know, 1 Corinthians 15, if if it's this life only, we're of— We should be pitied. We're pitied of all people. Above all yeah. people. Yeah. And that plays itself out in our service to the world, too, because often we think, I, I don't know how to handle it. I, mm-hmm. I, it breaks mm-hmm. my heart to walk into the pain and suffering of others, and especially when we see that pain and suffering of others self-inflicted. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I, I, it overwhelms me. I don't want to engage and I can't necessarily fix it all. And I think of Mother Teresa, she was washing the feet of a leper and somebody said, you know that they're going to die and it's not going to make a difference. And she says, I understand that, mm-hmm. but they're going to die knowing that they were loved. Mm. And, 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 and even if we can't fix the problem, um, if we ignore the pain and the suffering around us, the pain and the suffering around us is still there. Mm-hmm. If we go into that with the understanding, humble understanding that we may not be able to make a difference other than letting them know that they're valuable and loved in God's image and in our eyes, we might be able to walk with them and walk them out of some of that self-inflicted dysfunction and brokenness, and that produces deep joy. Mm-hmm. And so we avoid it because we think, if you know, see no evil, hear no evil. If I just stay away, it won't mm-hmm. exist. It's there already. It's yep. there already. <laughs> so let's walk into it humbly with the Lord. And let him try to minister in and through us in the process. Yeah. There's a dichotomy there that Laura Woods even introduced, has said before, but in, reintroduced me last week of a responsiveness to the pain and brokenness versus a responsibility. That's a great phrase. Mm-hmm. And you, mm-hmm. Doug, what you just described is a responding to, through the grace of God, through the Spirit's empowerment to do that and to work in and through you and let the person that's responsible to heal and <laughs> and redeem be the one that's doing it right like we mm-hmm. can we're, we're agents we're we're vessels uh but so we can respond 
Yeah. We, not be responsible for. Which, mm-hmm. which I think when we're not responsible, we should never, we can't stand in judgment over the one who is, hmm. which as a parent, I live in this all the time mm-hmm. because my one kid will come to me <laughs> and say, this kid did this, mm-hmm. respond this way. And I've mm-hmm. taken to asking, what, what do you think I should do? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And the answer is mostly just for humor's sake, because I just love the answers mm-hmm. I get because mm-hmm. they're so out of touch with what would either be helpful or what would be righteous mm-hmm. and, or what and they just. would want for themselves. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it's just, it doesn't move it forward. And so I'm the one with the responsibility for my kids. They are not the ones mm-hmm. with the responsibility to met out judgment and punishment. And yet their understanding of what I should be doing is so askance and askew that it's a reminder for me. I do not stand in authority over God, <laughs> or I do not stand <laughs> with any right to say, God, the way you are handling your responsibility is wrong. Mm. Um, sure, I don't see it or I don't understand it, but my timeline is so different. My s- mm-hmm. sense of scale and sense of understanding is mm-hmm. so minimal. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to stand before him and just worship. Mm-hmm. So um, mm-hmm. that's a really freeing, that, that's a great line, the mm-hmm. responsiveness versus responsibility. And that was Laura Woods that yeah. was in yeah. teaching me last yeah. week. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Our director that's of care ministry. Yeah. So she does great. Indeed. Yeah. That's... Um, this weekend we had our lunch for our connections ministry and yeah. uh, uh, John Tyson asked a question. He was a, the, the speaker via video that we had. He says, how many people under all of their cultural hatred are actually just hungry for a place to be loved? Mm. Mm. You know, as we think about where these lines draw, we can either redraw the line so that there's quote unquote, not an excuse mm-hmm. to hate one another, or we can keep the line there and say, God loves us despite our violation of that standard. And and he wants to bring us to a deeper understanding that we can't possibly, as you just said, grasp all of his purposes yet. But he wants to do that in grace and love. How many people under all their cultural hatred are actually just hungry for a place to be loved? Then I ask another question. How many people who are violent and angry and opposed are simply in a crisis of meaning, crisis of meaning because nobody has cared? Hmm. Yeah. Oh, and that's the we can respond to mm-hmm. the brokenness by walking into it with somebody mm-hmm. without the responsibility of having to fix it all. Yeah, mm-hmm. being present. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's such, it's the call of the church, <laughs> be present in brokenness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when we do that with humility, others then might see and ask, well, how have you dealt? Well, right. There's a God who knows us and mm-hmm. he loves us. And in, despite the pain and the suffering and the valleys I've walked through, I see God right there and he's given me a picture of what's beyond that mm-hmm. that keeps me moving forward. I know I'm not stuck here. Yeah. And he gives me an, the ability to look into my own heart and to see what changes I can make to enjoy life the way he intended a little bit better than I do on myself otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a great word mm-hmm. as we consider those things. Any yeah. last thoughts on Jude? I just, I guess, kind of bringing it all back to one of the things that you called us to is to ask the question, what compromises righteousness in my life? Mm -hmm. Great question. That should like almost be on one of those note cards that you regularly visit throughout the week. Right. Um, But then also like, so you ask that question and you list quiet, listen quietly to the conviction of the spirit. You pray Psalm 139 and you don't stop there. You respond through confession and repentance. And that, um, and then I think, Doug, even you said, invite other people to speak into you, right? Mm-hmm. So confession and repentance is, hey, I've got this to, I'm going to mm-hmm. confess. I, need, I want your, you to be here with me mm-hmm. as I confess mm-hmm. that, right? Mm-hmm. You can do it in private, but you can also do it yeah. with people. Yeah. Um, There's freedom when you do it with people. Yeah. There is. Right? There's often captivity, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Yep. And you highlighted that in the Align thing as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So for yeah. those who, who are you going to talk to? Yep. Right. Who are you going to talk to? Who are you going to invite into those struggles? Yeah. Who are you going to invite into your goals and your mm-hmm. that can encourage and challenge you in that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, there's just. I mean, my my first thing was Jude is written to a body of believers. Do this in the body, in, in a in a community mm-hmm. of believers, um, and just I think at first blush when you read Jude, if you just read it once and you move past it, like we typically do in a regular. You know, Woodlands in the Word, one one chapter a, a day. I, I, you almost, I get puffed up and a little prideful and pompous. And then after reading it and studying it in a while, it, it humble. It's mm. so humbling mm-hmm. to start off with as one who is loved, called by God, kept for Jesus Christ. Mm. Mercy has to be multiplied to me. That means I require mercy. Yep. Right? Like just start there with the first three verses and just sit there for a while before you move on and say, oh, 
God, their judgment is required here. Yeah. God's going to bring it. He has and he will. And if he doesn't, we stay in our own miserable self. Right, right. Yeah. And then flip the page and it's like, oh, how do, like, what's the command here? Keep myself in the love of mm-hmm. God, which means that I met out mercy as well. <laughs> there, there, <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. And there's a, you know, there's a conditional, seemingly conditional phrase in John 15. It says, he who abides in me remains in my love. And I thought, God's not a conditional God, but that's a conditional statement. Mm-hmm. If you don't remain in me, I'm not going to love you. Mm-hmm. I looked at that and looked at that and looked at that. And I go, no, no, that's not what that's saying. Mm-hmm. It's saying, if you walk outside mm-hmm. of me, then you won't have my love. Mm-hmm. He who abides in me remains in my love through whatever this world yeah. brings. Mm-hmm. Stay and, and st- remain in it's it. It's an invitation. It's an invitation yeah. to stay within the confines, yeah. the care, the love. It's not nurture. that God won't love you. It's just that you don't benefit you from don't being, benefit in, God's from being in God's yeah. love. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, and and I I liked what you said, Dave. I just gonna summarize your three points. I had to work hard to read my own writing. Right, <laughs> it looks really it's, beautiful. Oh, it so. looks great from a distance. Uh, <laughs> it's hieroglyphics when you get close. We must not be swayed by evil. Yeah, uh, we must not be scared of evil. We must not be surprised by evil. Uh, how many times we just go, what in the world? Right. Mm-hmm. God has said, and you pointed out, Jesus said, you will be. Hated, you will suffer. Mm-hmm. This is the world we live in. It's because of evil. God's not unaware of it. Knowing that he's not unaware of it, knowing that he's done something about it, allows us to walk with him in his love in the midst of it. Mm-hmm. I think perhaps one of the more pervasive thoughts, lies, it comes out of prosperity gospel, but it's broader than that in the modern evangelical church is that faithfully following Jesus will make life easy. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. Mm-mm. It doesn't make it any easier at all. Mm-hmm. In most cases, it makes it harder. Mm-hmm. Following Jesus makes life purposeful. It makes, makes it purposeful. It, mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes it matter. Mm-hmm. It makes yep. it matter. Exactly yep. right. So uh, that's such a difference mm-hmm. in terms of that. Right? I, mean, I mean, there are some things that are easier, right? I mean, we do a lot of self-inflicting. Yeah. <laughs> and if we walk and abide in Christ, we do a lot less self-inflicting. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the community that we gain in the church mm-hmm. should be huge value added. Yes. But so. the irony of that is the more we see the goodness of God in our own lives and stuff, the more our hearts break. Mm-hmm. And we become aware of the evil around us, and that's mm-hmm. that's what also gets hard. That's what gets disillusioning too. The more I fall mm-hmm. in love with Jesus, I'm like, why is this other stuff going on, and why doesn't just everybody believe? Like, yeah, they don't. Yeah, and it'd and, be way better. Yeah, yeah. Um, as you were talking there, Whitney, I, I was thinking practically. Uh, can you imagine like this letter being read in the house church? Like the d- person came from the other yeah. house church and delivered Who's it. Who's the one like, that's doing this? All right, this? here's yeah. the doozy. Yeah, <laughs> Good luck. You like gather with the church and you're reading. And as yeah. you're reading, someone's like, you're, everyone's kind of looking at the same person. <laughs> like, All right, hey, Bart, you're going to have to leave, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's you. It's you. Get out of here. And he's just um, slithering. Right, yeah. right, oh, right. Get out of here. Um, and then Jesus hands the bread to somebody else. <laughs> There's, um, Didn't see that coming. Yeah, no. Um, uh, I, I think one of the clearest takeaways for me, though, too, in Jude was that the condemnation was all directed at the people who were intentionally mm-hmm. perpetrating this this sinfulness. Mm-hmm. It wasn't directed, and I, I was even afraid of this after I got done preaching. I was like, I hope there isn't someone who has been influenced away who feels like they should feel shame or they mm. should feel mm. condemnation. This is an invitation mm-hmm. to freedom, mm-hmm. um, an invitation to surrender the influences that are pulling us away from Christ. Um, Jude wasn't condemning those house churches. He was condemning the people who had infiltrated the house mm-hmm. churches, shepherds mm-hmm. eating. Uh, you Reefs know. at your love feast. Shepherds <laughs> will only look after themselves. Yeah. Waterless clouds. The wandering yep. stars, <laughs> right? Like dead um, trees, yeah, dead uprooted, trees. twice yeah. dead. Mm-hmm. So barren trees. Yeah. So strong um, language. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he doesn't pull those punches. Mm-mm. So, well, uh, Jude. It's a great. You know, the beautiful thing about Jude too is it's really easy to read. Mm-hmm. Like you can read it, it a number of times. And mm-hmm. so um, the encouragement: don't just wait until it shows up in Woodlands in the Word. Um, read it again. That's kind of with so. all these one-hit wonders, right? They're short. And I love profound. <laughs> they are. And I loved how you prefaced it yesterday with the fact that because they're short, we don't dwell as much. Mm-hmm. When you mm-hmm. are reading a longer book, some of the themes are repeated over and over and mm-hmm. you got to wrestle with them. Mm-hmm. But we can skip by them so quickly mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. go back and go, let's, let's glean the good. Sit in it. The, the, yeah. the gems that are in here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It'd be good to read it every day for a week um, and mm-hmm. just see what, what else mm-hmm. surfaces, especially mm-hmm. after having some sort of overview shaping of it. Yeah. So cool. 
Well, hey, we're going to spin the wheel and get to a random question spin the spinner. as we finish this out. I hope it's not me. So, Do you have a good question? Uh, yeah, okay. I do. So, I love how you're showing the camera I'm, to me. I'm sure. fine. I know. It's, yes. uh, it's me again. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, the question All this week. All of the waiting you've so, done earlier has been swapped. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, at least you know it's fair now. So, um, <laughs> If you could have someone follow you around all the time, like a personal assistant, what would you have them do? Oh, gosh. So, my, mine, so, I mean, I saw this question three minutes ago, so I haven't so been sitting in, it. I haven't been, I haven't been thinking oh, about it a lot. I've been thinking it. about you more. Um, <laughs> Good. <laughs> but my first reaction is I would have them clean the kitchen. Because huh. I think if they were my permanent personal assistant cleaning the kitchen could keep them busy <laughs> it's just that's, that's how it feels time spent in the kitchen that's how it wow. feels uh-huh. um there is there is no end to just and and it's it's mostly just kid stuff mm. um that just shows up on the counters and then where does it go from there yeah um you know their, their favorite artwork that they'll forget exists if i throw it away but i feel guilty if i throw it away because oh, it's their sure. favorite artwork and uh, those Until next week, those huh? pencils that they got <laughs> More comes back. in their Halloween basket yeah. back in October, and these pencils that are not sharpened and just float around, they're here on my table again. Where where do they go? Where do they go? These game pieces that uh, are deal. for the game that we might want to play, but sure. the game pieces are in 18 different rooms in the house. Yeah, I have an 18 room house, apparently. That's, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I know, it's wow. impressive. impressive. So, there are different games I went through away. The pencils, like I have to be careful what I put in the garbage because Sophie will see it and be like, oh, why'd you do that? Why'd you throw my pencil away from my Halloween basket? You know what Heather does? <laughs> That's me and my wife's the one throwing them away. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> She's wise. I'd be, it'd be bad if she wasn't. Here, here's a, a parenting uh, insight for any parents out there from, from my wife. She almost always has a brown paper bag that's mm-hmm. sitting up on a counter. Oh, that is where she's, she's tucking wise. things in yeah. garbage. And then every so often it just goes out to the garbage. Yep. The kids just have not caught on that. Well, that's a graveyard for their this? stuff. Mm-hmm. So no, they don't listen. Okay, to, do they listen to this? No, I don't know. No, they don't listen wow. to this. No, yes. no yeah, they but don't. they haven't caught on. <laughs> there's the end, there's always one or maybe two brown paper bags. I have to check the brown paper bags. <laughs> for your time what's, what's, my what's stuff some of my bags. stuff that's in there exactly? I'm going to be like, Heather, wow. I appreciate this, but wow. no. <laughs> mm-hmm. I want to hold on to that. Mm-hmm. But it's just, that's the, it's the purge the purge bag. See, the so, difficult thing is when you become an empty nester, you realize all that stuff on the counter. It's yours. It's your problem. It's mine. But that's my hope right it's, now it's, is that when I'm an empty nester, it's not going to be my ha- What are my so. patterns? What Doug is I? clearly telling you it is still, well, still going to be. It will bad. still exist. <laughs> it, it can't be. Then so. you got to decide, okay, I put that there. You start identifying mm. your lazy habits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, if I don't want to pick that up later, why don't I put it away now? <laughs> ah, you know, so, yeah. So perhaps your personal assistant should just be putting away all the things that you don't. Just clean up after you. Just all the just, things that you don't put away, just put them away. <laughs> and, and running, the other day I was sitting in the chair and Harvey, our four-month-old puppy, was doing something mischievous and I was barking at him, you know. Um, Bar- like actually? Not, not okay. barking, I was talking to him about not doing it. How do you I was, talk to a dog? You bark. So, And I was like, man, if I was actually serious about this dog training thing, I'd be getting up and getting a treat so I could mm-hmm. treat train him in response to this. But I have to get up. Mm. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna yell There's at him another, some more. Another idea so, for your personal assistant. Just, just tote around treat. dog treats. Yep. There you go. So treat for the next, or just train the dog. <laughs> so, um, yeah. What about you? What would your personal assistant do? Just follows you around the whole time. Oh, probably all of the things we just said. Like my kitchen is continu. I mean, it's the place where people. It's a continual. People are coming there all the time, right? Morning, noon, and night. Like that's <laughs> something's coming out of the kitchen, so it gets dirty. And it's where people not only come for food, but also come and drop things. And yep. so I think picking, I think maybe not just my personal, like me, I'm the person that puts all the things away in my house. So if they just took that from me and like did it for Brian and Sophie and myself. Just tidied. Awesome. Just be a tidier. Just tidied. Clean hmm. my house. Hmm. So my, Mine would be file all the things that I think are worth keeping that I want to file. Oh. And throwing away the things that, would you Art, and, and, and encouraging me and what you should keep that or encouraging me both writing down all my great ideas that I think mm-hmm. I'm going to pontificate more on someday or <laughs> encouraging me and that, you know, that's not a, such a good idea. Or that one is, but you should <laughs> hold on to that one. But helping me to uh, be realistic with those. Kind of streamlining, categorizing kind of streamlining, yeah, sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. So hmm. there you go. My someday maybe pile gets pretty big. I do want to just revisit the question that we had with Barry. Yeah. What was, what was it was like if you could have one on... Un- 
So if you could have essentially one unending supply, it's right up here. So if you could have an unlimited supply of one thing for the rest of your life, what is it? And the two examples were sushi or scotch tape. So that's a no brainer. It would not be scotch tape. <laughs> it's a no brainer. You have so, an idea. I would just say it would not, but oh, out of those two, tape. it would be sushi all sure. day long. Okay. <laughs> out of those two. But yeah, in general, yes. if you have an unlimited supply wow. of anything, what would it be, Doug? Love. Okay. So, wow. <laughs> we suck. Wow. That's, I've asked this question. Why are you even asking this question? I, I've asked this question to so many people. And Whitney's, yeah. Whitney's answer, um, <laughs> listeners, you'll appreciate this if you're still listening, if you made it through. Whitney's answer was uh, um, pig feed. <laughs> <laughs> um, AKA bacon. So, yeah. Which it is bacon, that, right? right? Yeah. But it also produces patterns in your life that yeah. you appreciate and yeah. that sort of stuff. We're, and I, we're also in the season so, when we had 13 pigs on the farm wow. and we're feeding all of them, right? Yeah. So like we're, we have piglets that we're getting rid of, but there was just, there's just a lot to feed right now. So, so, so right. I, we've heard all of these different answers from different people. And I asked my daughter Eden yeah. this question. I said, what would you have? And she's like, oh, love. That was her natural response. And I was like, oh, sweetheart, you have that. You have an unlimited supply of that from yeah, mom and me and from the Lord. From the Lord. <laughs> and so then her snap response is, she's like, oh, and then wisdom. Yeah. Thank you, Solomon. My 12, 12-year-old yes. daughter, right? you know? Right, and, and I read that aloud to my family, and they were like, oh, we're a bunch of schmucks. <laughs> yeah, your family had all said different <laughs> I things. I asked for pig feed. <laughs> I asked for storylines. Yeah, yeah, yes. Could have had love, could have had wisdom. <laughs> I know. So, What's this huge pile of corn in my backyard for? <laughs> this this is going to be a defining, we should ask people this question to, to that, just, that might be the it's a wisdom yeah. gauge. Because yeah. love is the, <laughs> so you are the uh, wise one. This has been defined. You learn things along so. the way. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, this has been Kevin Conversations. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week-ish, maybe. It's a, it's a regular <laughs> podcast. Our streak is two. Yeah, our streak is two. Uh, one for three next week. Uh, we'll see you. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>